Okay, this video is going to explore one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop, which is a layer mask. So easiest way to access layer masks are right down here. You select the layer and you click that button and it adds a mask. So I'm gonna be smart here and I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate the layer. I'll turn off my background layer. Again, I like to keep this uh, pretty much you know, the image that we brought in, uh, just kind of leave it there. Uh, that way we can always go back to the original image. Okay, so highlight that layer and hit layer mask, and there we go. What we have is this white box. Notice that there are these white lines around the corners. If I click on the icon for the image, notice the white lines go over there. So that is selected right now. So you can select the mask or you can select the icon. And this is important when dealing with masks because a mask you're going to paint in, but if you paint in here, it's going to go directly on the image. So how a layer mask works is basically it's either black or white. Wherever it's white, whatever the icon is or the effect is will shine through or will, will be present, will be visible. Wherever it's black, it won't. And so layer masks offer a really cool ability to uh, do quite a few things. So what we're going to do is actually ditch this layer mask. And we're going to add a black and white filter. Now, this is a very, very typical high school uh, photography student assignment uh, where they basically do an isolated color. And so we're going to isolate the pink and everything else is going to be black and white. So easiest way to do that is to notice we added the black and white adjustment layer and it comes with, in fact, every adjustment layer comes with a layer mask. And so all you really have to do is grab your brush and I'm going to make sure I have just a normal brush and make it a little bit soft. And here's where the black and white comes in handy. So if I paint white, right, it's not going to do anything. But if I paint black, oops, I still have it on my old brush. But notice the pink shines through. Uh, I need to go back to my old brush here. Where? Let's choose, let's go back to general brushes and choose my soft round brush. There we go. Okay. So what I want to do is increase the size. Now, see how size, small the uh, cursor is? You can come up here, the brush, not the cursor, and you can select it this way. However, professionals, no. We're going to hit the bracket tools, which are right next to P and forward slash, or backward slash. And so the brackets, the left and the right brackets, will increase or decrease the size of your brush. So uh, I'm going to have my brush about there. I'm going to go ahead and click, and there we go. And make it a little smaller. And I just want, see, so there's green, so I'm going to have to go back and fix that. But I just want to go wherever there is pink. And because there's a reflection, I'm going to have to make sure I get the reflection as well. And notice I'm not being very careful here, because I don't have to be. It's a layer mask. Layer masks are beautiful for not being careful. All right, so got all that pink in. And so now I can go back and actually fix it by switching back to white. But what I want you to do is see right there. See how that black shape there? That's where I painted black. And so now if I just kind of come in here with white and kind of do all my corrections so that we don't get that green showing up. And this can be time consuming. You could, there's so many different ways you could do this. You could uh, use your selection tools, which you'll hear about in a uh, future video. You can select the area and then go ahead and color it. And I'm gonna switch back to black so I can have the pink shine through where I Got a little bit, oops, got a little bit too much, right? And so this is the smart way to go about doing this. Rather than erasing something, 
right? I always have the ability to go back and change it. And so now I have that single tone color image that's very popular. What's really interesting is you can invert the mask. So if I make sure that the layer mask is selected, again, by these white lines around it, if I hit Command or Control I, it inverts it. And it kind of gives us a better sense, oh yeah, okay, actually, we need to get these areas that I missed, right? Especially that little pink area there, right around the edges. Right, and this just inverting it helps you see a little bit more that perhaps you didn't get all of the pink that you really wanted. And then I can just invert it back and voila. Okay, so that is the very basic idea of a layer mask. Layer masks can be added to pretty much any layer. And in fact, you can stack layer masks. So if I wanted to, I could add an additional layer mask. Um, I'll let you figure out why you would ever need to do that, but at the very least, you understand the basic idea of a layer mask and how to use it.